So generally there are four main methods for handling missing cases. Number one is you may use only valid data, means you don't do any imputation, you just use cases uh, that have no missing, missing data. And in species there are two methods, pairwise and listwise approach. You can Google to know more about them, but listwise uh, will exclude cases with any missing data, but pairwise will check whether you want to include that variable in the model. If that variable has no missing cases, so no issue, no case will be removed. Uh, so read more about them, uh, but this is not the method that I use. Uh, the other one is, I call it massage, massaging data. Massage means, uh, uh, <laughs> I tell you more, uh, means matching missing values with similar cases values. For example, you, um, you have a case um, and in one of Ali's, you see Ali's responses to all questions. He has missed one of the questions. Then you check your 300 samples, you find that let's say Alex and Alex profile and answers uh, are very similar to Ali. Both of them are a student, both of them are let's say Chinese, both of them are um, 20 years old, right? And their responses to most of the questions are very similar. Then Alex has no missing data. You just copy his answer to the question that Ali has mixed, missed and then you use it for Ali too. So you replace missing cases with uh, the data that you borrow from those cases with similar profiles, similar responses, but complete um, uh, answers. Um, I also don't use this method. Number three, you can replace the missing case with mean, median, mod, right? Uh, or regression-based uh, methods can be used to replace the missing case. Actually, this is the method that I usually use when uh, I have missing cases with less, I mean, with 10%, with less than 10% missing cases. Yeah, this is the rule of thumb. Ten, um, so if my missing cases is below 10% and it's random, it's not systematic. I use usually this case. I usually replace the missing case with mean. There is another method too, model-based methods, um, but they are not available in many statistical software packages. Um, and um, if you want to know more about it, you can Google. There is a lot about it. Uh, you can find a lot of information about it. But here I want to show you the most commonly used method that I told you I uh, usually use when I don't have many missing cases. Um, this is again SPSS, you go to transform, replace missing values and then uh, I, I can show it to you now. So you can refer to this slide, to this slide if you want to uh, replace the missing case with the mean, mode, uh, median. So how it works? Where to click on transform and then you replace missing cases. So transform, replace missing values. And okay, you remember, I think subjective norm, uh, I forgot which case had missing data. So I can check my SPSS output. Oh, subjective norm one and three and five. One, three and five have missing cases. So I go to transform, replace missing values, one, three and five. But just something to share with you. Okay, even it's fine, even no need to check this species output. You can select all of them. If there is no missing, nothing will happen, right? So in this case, I just move all of them to the right box. And now you just click on one of them. Um, so the name, the software is giving to it is just adds underline one at the end of each of these, you see on each of these uh, variable names. So it creates new columns you data file, but these new columns have been named as this variable name underline one, variable name underline one, variable name under one and so on. And they, these, the new cases have no missing data because their missing case has been replaced with, here you check, you, 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 you select um, series mean and blah, 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 right? So I just keep it as series mean and hit OK. Um, as you can see, number one, number K, um, I mean variable number one, variable number, subjective norm one, subjective norm three, and subjective norm five had missing cases, and they have been, uh, yeah, the missing cases have been replaced with the mean. 
So now we have 301 um, cases for each of these variables. And we can check, let's check frequencies and okay so I reset so these so these are all variables in our species data file I scroll down there are five new variables added to my data file these were not initially in the model right and as you can see their names has underline one because this is the variables we made right and we remove this as I mentioned before because we don't want too many tables and now hit OK so there is no more missing case with and there's no more missing case anymore and you can compare with the original one these five are the original ones right so you see the original one subjective norm has one missing case but the one that we made just now no missing case because this missing case has been replaced with the mean if I go to the right side of the data file these five just was were added they were not in the data file and um, ah, case number 266 was the one with missing case 266 and there is no more missing case and you see the value is 1.99 this is the mean of uh, the other cases and it has been rounded to two so these two it was the missing case and now has been replaced with a valid with uh, the mean of the series mean of all responses to the case so this is the way this is the way I usually handle the missing cases treat the missing cases when I don't have many missing data many missing cases and here I copy paste this from Hare's textbook and um, it's already in your references um, here you can see the advantages and disadvantages of each of the methods that we discussed and when they should be used um, as I mentioned I use uh, um, yeah, mean substitution means I replace the missing cases with mean it's good when you have uh, you don't have many missing cases and as I said they are randomly they randomly happen so you can you, you should read to know more about them but the best method like always like other things is prevention um, so use short surveys sometimes we think that if we include all variables that we may use in the future is a good strategy but guys this means a very long questionnaire and people after completing the first few pages they feel tired and they won't read the questions they give you random answers or they may miss the questions and your uh, missing cases will increase and make sure that your questions are easy to understand and if you have translated them um, use um, some um, do some content and face validity assessment to make sure that and do a pilot test as well to make sure that people understand your questions the questions are clear and you may force them to complete the questions for example if you use a google form or one of the online news surveys uh, yeah you can you can force people to complete otherwise they cannot um, submit the form though there are some arguments about it um, some people say it's not ethical or some people say when you force they then people will give you random answers or they give you um, you know something in the uh, around the mean and this may impact your results but anyway this is one of the methods forcing people using technology or you may consider a gift or token of appreciation uh, yeah sometimes I just tell my respondents that um, in the, my one of my studies I said yeah I gave them uh, a few gifts randomly so I said after we complete the data file we random we collected their handphone number and email addresses and we randomly selected five and gave them uh, an earphone and uh, sometimes cash so anyway this is up to you but something that um, is very easy to do and I um, strongly recommend you um, following this approach is put your dependent variable at the beginning of your questionnaire because the dependent variable is the most important variable you want to explain the dependent variable you want to predict the independent variable this is the main purpose of your study so 
if the dependent variable is the last variable mm, some people may as i said after completing maybe the beginning um, some questions they feel tired and they just uh, you know they may uh, just uh, leave it or uh, give random answers to the questions uh, so put your dependent variable at the beginning then you, there is uh, less chance to get missing cases for this important variable so how i put my variables in uh, my questionnaire based on their importance so the most important variable is the dependent i put it at the first and then the second the third and the least important variables usually are the last questions